Good afternoon, on. everyone. It is exactly 12 o'clock noon on Thursday, March 5th, and I call this Road and Drainage District meeting to order. Those of us that are present are Ms. Taylor, our interim proposed city clerk, Commissioner Hanks, Vice Mayor Luke, myself, Mayor McDowell, Commissioner Emmerich, City Attorney Ms. Slayton, Assistant City Manager Mr. Yarborough. We have the Chief of Police and a lot of staff, a few citizens, so welcome everybody. At this time, I would like to ask Ms. Ashley Hain, I'm sorry, Ms. Ashley Walters to please come up <laughs> and say the Pledge of Allegiance. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm blessed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ms. Ashley. Appreciate it. All righty. It's going to be a long meeting, guys, so let's get it going. <laughs> No, we oh. got to get, get this done. We got to get it done. I have full confidence we'll get it done before a one o'clock meeting. Um, at this time, I need an approval of our long agenda. So, and I'll second. I have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Hank, seconded by Vice Mayor, to approve the agenda as presented. Mine's, yeah, mine's not. I'm at, yeah. And that passed four to zero. Um, um, Vice Mayor, do we have any public comment? We do not. We do not. Thank you very much. Moving on to second reading of ordinance number 2020 11, amending the road and drainage district meeting budget. City Clerk, could you please read by title only? Ordinance number 2020 11, an ordinance of the City of Northport, Florida, amending the road and drainage district budget for fiscal year 2019 20 by providing for changes identified in Exhibit A to transfer $1,042,710 from fund balance to the road maintenance program, providing for findings, providing for conflicts, providing for severability, and providing an effective date. Thank you very much. And my computer still isn't working, so we're going to have to do voice votes on this. Um, Assistant City Manager, do you have anything that you would like to? Nothing really to add, just an additional $1 million to cover the additional work that was found that uh, in the Cake, greater Cake Terrace area that Ajax Paving is doing currently. That's all I have to add. Thank you very much. Does anybody wish to speak to this item? No, I can make a motion. Go for it. If you'd like to make a motion, uh, please. Move to approve ordinance number 2020-11 as presented. Second. A yeah, motion on the floor by Vice Mayor to approve ordinance number 2020-11 as presented and seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? Uh, no, just thank you to Road and Drainage for addressing this and figuring out where the funds would come from. Thank you. And anything, Commissioner Emmerich? Ditto. Okay. At this well said. <laughs> seeing no other speaker lights, we'll go ahead and call the vote. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> and it was awesome. And that passed four to zero. Um, Vice Mayor, Everybody do we have any stated. public comment? Nobody's, no comments. Any comments from staff, no, assistant charter officers, commissioners? All righty. Um, at this time, it's 1204. We're adjourned.
good afternoon, everybody. It is now 101, and I call this commission meeting to order. It is March 5th, and I'd like to welcome everybody. Those present are Assistant City, Assistant City Manager, Mr. Yarborough, City Attorney, Ms. Leighton, Commissioner Emmerich, myself, Mayor McDowell, Vice Mayor Luke, Commissioner Hanks, and Interim slash Proposed City Clerk, Ms. Taylor. Um, at this, we also have the Chief of Police and staff and citizens in attendance. Thank you for all being here. At this time, I'd like to have Mr. Bill Gunnan with our Mr. Northport Chamber of Commerce come up and lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance, please. No. You can't call you Mrs. <laughs> I know. Please, pledge of me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Mr. Gunnan. Yeah, technically wouldn't be right. It would be All righty, yeah. folks, at this time, let's get an approval of the agenda. So moved. I have a motion on the floor to approve the agenda as presented by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Go ahead and take the vote. Hold up. We got we to gotta start over, guys. Assistant City Manager, didn't we need to pull yes, an item? Yes, ma'am. 4A you. needs to be pulled completely. All right. Okay. I just remembered it when I put my paper okay. over. So could we please redo this and, and, and have... Uh, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda pulling 4A. Which is the skate park mural. Second. A motion on the floor um, approving the agenda pulling the discussion and possible action regarding the skate park mural that was done by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. We'll go ahead and take the vote now. Thank you. Thank you. And that passed four to zero. Good thing I turned that paper over. <laughs> I didn't think about it either. All righty. Um, do we have any general public comment? There are no general. Thank you, ma'am. And at this time, Assistant City Manager, welcome new employees, please. I'll ask uh, uh, HR to come up and get this rolling. Thank you. Very good. For the record, Deborah Hope, Human Resources Manager, it's my pleasure to announce our new employees. If you are here, please stand up as I call your name. With NDS, we have Richard Terpstra, Plans Examiner Inspector. Welcome. With Parks, we have Nicholas Reynolds, Recreation Attendant. Welcome. And with Public Works, Rashad Livingston, Solid Waste Equipment Operator. Welcome. Welcome, guys. We wish you all a long and happy career here. Thank you. So at this time, we'll move on to thank you very much. Um, move on to general business, which is the discussion and possible action to allow or restrict uh, low speed vehicles. Uh, Assistant City Manager, I am going to turn it over to you for a very uh, in-depth discussion. Yes, ma'am. You, uh, I will do that along with the help of our uh, Deputy Police Chief. Um, this was requested, I think uh, it came up by Commissioner Luke uh, at a previous commission meeting and you all discussed it. Uh, the uh, Police Department's done in-depth research uh, about state laws and, and our city ordinances as it pertains to this subject. And with that, I'm going to yield the floor to Chief Garrison as well as uh, Deputy Police Chief um, Morales. May I speak to that? Sure. All right. Thank you. Um, this was an agenda item that I placed on uh, a little while back. Uh, I had a gentleman who will be speaking to this later during public comment who came into uh, City Hall went over to the clerk's office and Commissioner Hanks and myself were actually in the office at that point in time. And he had been sent over here by the police department. He had gone in uh, and wanted to be able to utilize a uh, low speed vehicle. Uh, it is different, has a different definition than a golf cart. And he was producing some state statutes to me 
And I said, well, I'm going to have to look into this. So we've had several conversations. I looked into the state statute, reached out to uh, Deputy Chief Morales, and I'm like, I don't see where this, there's any thing within the city, it looks like the state regulates this and they're good to go. And so that is how it started by a citizen actually bringing this forward and he'll tell his story during uh, the comment of, of why he wants uh, to see this so he's able to utilize them. So with that background, uh, Deputy Chief did a lot of investigation and he'll present it. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, Deputy Chief Chris Morales. Uh, so there's two parts to this uh, in statute. We can talk, we, there's golf carts and there's low speed vehicles. So to break the two apart so everyone understands, um, golf carts are um, <clears throat> under state statute, um, basically have a maximum speed of not to be greater than 20 miles an hour. Um, and they can, um, they're basically regulated um, by um, governing body, which is municipalities of where they can be accessed and used or allowed to be used on roadways. Um, they can't be on roadways with a greater a certain speed uh, mileage of uh, 35 miles per hour um, if, if allowed, and they cannot um, cross certain state roadways department that Department of Transportation oversees. You are talking about the low speed vehicle now, not the golf we're, cart. We're talking, I'm still on with, with the golf carts. I'm just trying to, trying to show the, the differences between golf carts and low and speed vehicles. You stated it could be on a road at 35 mile an hour? Um, a golf cart? Um, I think that's what you just mm -hmm. said. Yes, let me just make sure here. Um, that's what I heard too. Golf cart can't be on the road without being licensed and everything. That's what makes it a, a golf speed. cart may be on public roadways if the governing body, the municipalities or county government allows such golf carts on certain roadways that are that are operated and controlled by the governing body, which are public roadways. Um, however, Department of Transportation prohibits golf carts crossing their roadways unless they have. Um, Department of Transportation's approval um, to cross those roadways, which you have to do a study, submit to them, and get approval. So, for instance, golf carts on 41, if they were coming from Grand Paradiso, want to cross over 41, they would have to get cert we would have to get permission from D uh, Department of Transportation and show a study um, from the city to the state. Uh, that's for uh, golf carts. Golf carts can be operated by a, by a person 14 years of age or older. There is no um, si uh, uh, restrictions on as far as um, the uh, equipment on the vehicle unless the governing body allows after sunrise or sunset, then there has to be headlights, taillights, and all that on golf carts. Low speed vehicles. Low speed vehicles are greater than 20 miles per hour but not to exceed 25 miles per hour. And they have to have all these regulations on the vehicles, on this low speed vehicle, such as um, headlights, windshield, taillights, turn signals, seat belts. They have to be registered. So they have to have a license uh, plate on it and they have to be insured just like a regular motor vehicle. A low speed vehicle would operate no differently than any, um, any other motor vehicle on that roadway. They basically can operate right directly on the roadway. Um, a very uh, one uh, city that does it. If anyone's ever been to Key West, Florida, Key West has all low-speed vehicles. They operate um, throughout there. They're all registered. They all have seat belts, and they follow state statute. So, with that being said, our city ordinance only talks about golf carts. Um, so, golf carts are right now in the city. Um, we used to have. Holiday Park mentioned as an area that is allowed in our ordinance. Recently, it was removed. For many, many years, I always knew Holiday Park was. Well, when reading state statute, state statute not only talks about golf course communities, but it also talks about mobile home parks that golf carts can be used. So it makes sense why Holiday Park was removed. Um, low speed vehicles, um, however, as it states right now, 
because our ordinance is silent state statute prevails so anybody that has on a roadway a public roadway 35 miles per hour or less can operate a low speed vehicle in the city and low speed vehicles based on state statute may cross DOT roadways because they're considered registered they meet statutory requirements um, the only other part in the city right now for golf cart use is Lakeside Plantation, the roadway, um, which is in our ordinance. Other than that, it's according to how the statute, Florida State statute says is the municipality decides what roadways golf carts are. So if it's not a lot explained, then it's prohibited as the statute reads. So right now, only golf carts can go on Lakeside Plantation and mobile home parks and golf communities. Low speed vehicles right now as it stands, commissioners can go anywhere on roadways 35 miles per hour or less and the driver of the vehicle has to have a valid driver's license, which means a person 16 years of age or older in the state of Florida can operate a LSV. So with that, I, I'm open to questions <clears throat> that you all may have. Commissioner Emmerich. Just for the record, you said that the uh, golf carts were up to 20 miles an hour. Not to exceed 20 miles per hour. Right, but a low-speed vehicle was 25 miles an hour. At 20, uh, speeds of 20, not greater than 25, yes, sir. What is considered a low-speed vehicle, then? <clears throat> can you give an example? A low-speed vehicle, I can, uh, if you want, sir, I can read you the definition of the low-speed vehicle per state statute. Um, means any four-wheeled vehicle whose top speed is greater than 20 miles per hour but not greater than 25, 25 miles per hour, including but not limited to neighborhood electric vehicles, low-speed vehicles must comply with safety standards um, in 49 uh, code, uh, Florida code and 57.1 and 500 of the Florida code. So golf carts are under 20 miles an hour. Low-speed vehicles are above 20 to 25 but they also have to have all the safety regulations um, for, for the low-speed vehicle, and that's going to be um, under section uh, state statute 316.2122. Low-speed vehicles must be equipped with headlamps, stop lamps, turn signal lamps, tail lamps, reflectors, parking brakes, rear view mirrors, windshield seat belts, and vehicle identification number. Um, they must be registered and insured in accordance with Florida State Statute 320.02 entitled pursuant to Chapter 319. But it could be, in essence, a hopped up golf cart. A lot of, they, they, there's pictures on there, Commissioner, on the uh, attachments. They look like golf carts, except they're just enhanced. Right. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Just wanted that for the record. Thank you. Yep. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Um, Vice Mayor Luke, you're next. Uh, just for edification, if you don't mind reading the definition then of a golf cart Certainly. and then letting us know what the regulation and code is within our city for golf carts also. Thank you. means a motor vehicle that is designed and manufactured for operation um, on a golf course and sporting recreation purposes that is not capable of exceeding speeds of 20 miles per hour. And what was your second, Vice Mayor? Oh, wh what's the regulation we have within our city on golf carts? On our ordinance. I have it if you need it. Um, 74, yes. It's in the backup because yeah, I back, requested yeah. that it go into the backup. Um, just for everybody sitting in the room and listening in that, I think it'd be good to know what we state. I can help you with that, I Vice Mayor, since he's looking. Okay, I didn't read in the Florida statute that you could take an unlicensed golf cart out on a road. I didn't read that in the statute. Uh, I'm a little shocked 
You, I'm that, sorry. That Florida law would allow an unlicensed mm -hmm. vehicle out on a road? So if I can read this under, uh, a golf cart may be operated upon any county road. It's just so we're, so we're clear. Golf carts are not allowed. I'm talking about low-speed vehicles right now can't. Not can't. Golf, can't. can't. Right. Yeah, can By state. Not golf carts. Thank golf you. Carts, right. that was yes. Golf, uh, low speed vehicles. I mean, let's start. Low speed vehicles, as right now as it stands, in our city, can operate on roadways 35 miles far or less because our ordinance is silent. Golf carts, right now, can only operate on Lakeside Plantation, golf course communities, and Holiday Park because of state statute. So let me read this. This is where I'm going to say this comes in here. Thank a you. golf cart may be off. Or by the way, it's uh, Florida Statute 316.212, operation of golf carts on certain roadways. A golf cart may be operated only upon a county road that has been designated by a county, a municipal street that has been designated by a municipality, or a two-lane county road licensed within jurisdiction of a municipality designated that municipalities for use of golf carts. Prior to making such, such designation, the responsible local government entity must first determine that golf carts may safely travel on or across the public roads or street, considering factors include speed, volume, and character of motor vehicle traffic using the road or street. Upon a determination that golf carts may be safely operated on designated roads or streets, the responsible government entity shall post appropriate signs to indicate that such operation is allowed. Thank you. That's, that's, that clarifies yeah. it. Yep. May I ask one other question, please, sir? Um, in, in our um, code or restrictions, uh, do we allow golf carts to be rented within the city limits? That to be rented? Yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I mean, the city uh, attorney could answer that too. I'm just wondering if somewhere within our code we're restricting somebody from renting a golf cart within I, the city. I, Not aware of a, of a no, restriction no, like that? Okay, thank no, you. No, Vice Mayor, no. Um, just so you know, I did reach out to our, our counterparts in Public Works um, regarding roadways. So uh, Director Julie Belia also has some information about the roadways uh, relating to this, this topic. So, um. Can we see if maybe city attorney or staff knows of any code uh, that restricts renting of golf carts because I, I would think that if you're at a golf cart community and you've got company and they want to rent a golf cart from like Heron Creek, they have golf carts available. That's the to first rent. I've heard of a restriction. I, I've never, and then obviously law enforcement side we don't deal with we, that. So we can we can check into it and get you an answer back. Okay. And maybe in the meantime, city attorney or maybe staff might be listening and hearing the conversation about renting and restrictions of renting golf carts. And I'm doing a search for the word rent. I don't see anything. Thank you. Uh, do you have any recommendations in regards to um, restrictions or what you would like to see? I know you've been collaborating with road and drainage with the roads. Do you have recommendations for these low-speed vehicles? I, I think with that, I, I have spoken with Chief Garrison, and with that, I'll, I'll refer Chief Garrison to, as the chief of police of his concerns regarding <clears throat> low-speed vehicles and golf cart use in, in the city. So, Chief Garrison. Chief Garrison. My concern initially is I don't believe our road system and infrastructure is, is set up for these low-speed vehicles. Um, and and I, I see a potential hazard. Uh, we have... A, hard enough time in the city right now with cars crashing into each other, let alone uh, vehicles crashing into uh, low speed vehicles. And I think if, <coughs> if we have an increase of those vehicles on the roadway right now, when we do have a crash, you're potentially looking at a lot more serious accident. Oh, um, Vice Mayor, I just heard from our planning division um, who readily knew the answer that I did not know. In section 74-154, I'm not sure if that's our code or ULDC, 
Um, it does say there shall be no operation of rented golf carts in the city on the various streets, right of ways, alleys, or property of the city. Okay, so they. Would no. you read that again? There shall be no operation of rented golf carts in the city on the various streets, rights of way, alleys, or property of okay, the city. Okay, so it's not prohibiting the rental, it's just prohibiting them from operating one that they have rented out on city but property. But not hindering somebody who owns one from operating. Excuse the. Say it one language. more time. It's talking about where rentals are operated on, can't be operated on streets, rights of ways, alleys, or city property. So it's not saying you can't rent it, it's just saying if you rent it, you can't operate them here. Even, well, you, so even in other words, the areas that we have one designated. At time, one at a time, please. For example, a golf course doesn't fit within that restriction. So if you wanted to rent so, a golf yeah. cart and drive around on a golf course. Yeah. Holiday Park, does that fit within that description? I'm not familiar. I don't. Well, I mean, we were just saying that we had, you know, that we have given opportunity for for golf cart traveling, holiday park, or you know, areas like this. Like to rented golf carts. Right, but that's what I'm saying. You can't rent one, so a family can't go and stay with somebody in a, one of these communities, rent a golf cart, and utilize it, even though the person who owns one can. I guess that's that's where I'm confused. Is that the way that's reading? It sounds like it's in, I really, up to the, interpretation. I, I would not want to compare two different provisions of the code for potential conflicts without having time to sit down and, and really evaluate that. This is not an item that has right. been through our office for review because the board has not directed it. So It's just very confusing to, to yeah. me that you couldn't rent one, but you could own one yeah. and drive it. I just yeah. that, That's why I was trying to get a clarification as to the... I'm sorry. Thank you. And that was 74-154, City Attorney. Thank you. Um, any other questions, Commission, uh, Vice Mayor Luke? Uh, it's more of a comment than a question. Let's, let's get some, Wait to, yeah, if you don't mind, because we have public comment. Let's get some questions um, from all of us, and then we'll hear public okay. comment and then do. Um, Commissioner Hanks, you had your light on. Yeah. I'm wondering, did you still no, want to speak? with all the questioning, um, it kind of answered what I was lo looking for. So. Thank you. Um, I do have a couple questions. So low-speed vehicles cannot reach higher speed limits of the mechanics of the low-speed vehicle higher than 25. Correct, according to state statute. Are there low-speed vehicles or medium speed vehicles or high speed vehicles that are like golf carts? Uh, a low speed vehicles is very, is I compare it to a golf cart with those modifications and upgrade of the, of the, the speed is capability um, is, is very similar to, to a golf cart. Do they, and, and I don't know in your research, do they make golf carts that go faster than 25 miles an hour? I'm sure Or they, low speed vehicles? I'm not the expert, but there is an expert in this audience that could probably answer that. I'm, I'm not an expert on, on okay. what the maximum speeds are in a golf cart. Or golf cart My speed. concern <clears throat> is state statute, is that only for city roads, city owned maintained roads for the low speed vehicles or is that even the private roads well it, it talks about it because private's private you can't control so it's talking about the public roadways so golf course communities that's why it's 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 a it's a authorized mobile home parks um same thing with like the instance with west villages uh, and this is a hot topic right now because west villages that's agreement district just now signed a traffic enforcement agreement they made sure all their, their signage is, uh, is up to speed with uh, public works, make sure it meets those standards. Um, and they, they provide that to, to the city staff. So right now, they buy, uh, with them signing with the city on this enforcement agreement, they abide by what is written in city ordinance on their roadways. So West Village's Parkway, Grand, um, Renaissance Road, Mar um, Merlot Street, all of those roadways would be right now prohibited from golf cart usage because we have a traffic enforcement agreement with, with West Village's Improvement District. Okay, and 
I think a lot of it is because golf carts and low speed vehicles. Low speed vehicles, because of this traffic agreement, this traffic enforcement agreement, if the West Village is, because those roads out there are privately owned. West Village's Parkway is a private road. Prado Boulevard, private road. All the little roads in the neighborhoods are private roads. Because of this enforcement agreement, do we then regulate the, the activities on those roads? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, state statute, because our code is silent, allows the low speed vehicles with certain signage on these private slash enforcement agreement roads. Yes, but not certain signage. Low speed vehicles do not need certain signage. Okay. Golf carts, if you were to allow golf carts, the city would have to post designated signs for golf carts per state statute, but not low speed vehicles because <coughs> Once you have them registered and insured and it meets all the statutory requirements, they're considered a motor vehicle on a, on a roadway 35 miles per hour or less. Okay. And, and they do not need permission, they do not need a certain authorization to cross over a state uh, designated highway. So the golf carts are what needs the signage? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Who, who's responsible for installing the signage for golf carts? Because we don't need it for low speed vehicles. State statute says the government entity shall post the sign, so it would be the city. Okay. So are you saying that West Villages is allowing golf carts, not low speed vehicles, golf carts on West Villages Parkway, uh, Renaissance, Prado, those roads? I, I haven't seen a golf, I've seen some LSVs, which how I identified LSVs, I haven't seen golf carts, but being at the Braves detail, um, actually one of our trafficking officer Carter's been there. I've seen LSVs there, which they actually had a tag on the back. They had the seat belts. So right earlier, I've already saw, I've seen that there are LSVs operating within the West Villages Improvement District um, in the past couple weeks. All right. So I, I can't say if I actually saw a golf cart, but I, I can tell you right now, I did physically see an, S, an SLV. What, what is the speed limit out on? Um... West Villages Parkway. Officer Carter. 30, I believe. 30. So these LSVs are going slower than the flow of traffic because they can only go 25 miles an hour. That is correct. The posted speed limit, yes. Sir. So you, re remind you, just to remind you, the state statute says 35. I know. And the speed, maximum speed of an LSV is 25. So there's... Exactly. Yeah. So they, they, they can go up to 10 miles an hour slower than the flow of traffic. I mean... That's the discussion I was going to talk mm -hmm. about. What's the minimum <laughs> and, and speed? I'm trying, right. What's the minimum yeah. speed at a 30 or 35? There's not one, is there? No. So do you have concerns with these low-speed vehicles only being able to operate at 25 miles an hour, if even that fast because you said they go between 20 and 25 being on our city roads that have a speed limit of 35 and we all know how everybody follows the speed limit <laughs> I, I think mayor that uh, to refer back to chief garrison certain roadways absolutely with infrastructure there are concerns um, but per state statute I think you're allowed to regulate certain areas where you all say yes to and where you all say no to and I think that's the decision you all would have to make. But again, with Chief Garrison, our concern is where do you where are you going to allow this? Because right now, um, certain parts of Sumter Boulevard's 35 miles an hour. Thank you. Um, certain major uh, connectors here are 30 miles an hour, and we have a lot of traffic in our city. So, um, and that's again, that's where I like to refer to our our partners from Public Works to you know to to talk about that of what are the concerns of having. LSVs in certain areas of the city with speed limits of 35 miles per hour or less. So, and, and I don't know if even state statute, because I tried to find <clears throat> this answer. What happens if you have a road that has a speed limit in, in this part of the road at 30, this part of the road is at 35, and this part of the road is at 40 or higher? How does that, because they're allowed to work here, they're allowed to operate here, 
but they'd have to. She just said the same. You better get off the road at that point. This is opening a can yeah. of worms, and and we have. They can cross. They can cross. Does this assistant city manager, did Ms. Julie want to weigh in on her concerns with? Because I, I. Julie, would you like to? Yeah, she's yes, coming. Sir. Would you like I, to I think it's important yes, to hear. More than more than anything. For the record, Julie Annabelle, a public works director. Um, it, it is it is true. Currently, our city codes do not address the low speed vehicles. However, I spoke to um, Jerry Traverso yesterday. He's our engineering division manager. And this is one of the tasks in our mobility study that he has asked them to address, uh, the consultant. That being said, so we would, in fact, at then, once that's uh, created and the study is completed, we will develop regulations on it. That being said, Mr. Traverso also mentioned to me that typically, for safety, perp for safety reasons, you have to strongly critique whether or not to allow the low-speed vehicles on your roadways. In this city, he would not recommend it. He would definitely <laughs> recommend at this point in time, just based upon our infrastructure, the way our road network is situated, um, pretty much the speed limitations would be for local roads, which means every time you'd have to traverse an arterial, arterial road or the speed limit changes and you cross an intersection, the state statute allows you to cross that intersection at a higher rate of speed, but you're gonna be faced with the fact, I'm going down the local road, now I've come to an arterial, I'm just going to have to turn around and go elsewhere, or are they going to go ahead and get on that road? So these are all the types of things we have to look at. Um, but at this point in time, he said his experience with other areas that he's worked in, generally they're off-road. You know, the regulations are for, you know, specific, specified areas where they can drive them that are off the roads. So that's it. that was his first initial reaction. He would like to uh, delve into it more with the consultant as the mobility study develops. Mm -hmm. One final question and for maybe chief or deputy chief, local neighborhood roads. And if I'm um, going back to my little handy book of r rules of the road, local residential roads, that speed limit is 30 miles an hour. Could you uh, confirm or? So yeah, on the side streets in Officer Carter, you can jump on this, is that if you go off a main road, you would assume the speed limit is 30 until you see a, an erected, a post or otherwise posted. You are to assume that that roadway is 30 miles per hour. And I think pretty much of our roadways, they have posted signs of 30 miles per hour in the residential neighborhood. The residential is 30? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. That's what I thought. I just needed confirmation. All right, seeing no other speaker lights on, does anybody have any last minute questions? Otherwise, we'll move um, on to public. Okay, yep, yeah, no, I'm good. All right. All right, so we have a Mr. Nelson Duran and then uh, Rich Cucci. And if you could please go up to the podium there, and you do have three minutes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon, commissioners and the public. My name is Nelson Druin. My wife, Jennifer, and I have been a resident of Northport for the past 11 years. Four years ago, we purchased a mini recreational scooter. In addition to that, I made a passenger trailer that tagged behind the scooter. The grandchildren love it. We have been to Circle K for slushies, McDonald's for ice cream, and a neighborhood Walmart for a few groceries. We love to participate in our community activities. We have been part of the Point Sela Christmas Parade for the last three years, creating and decorating a float. Due to our family growing with more grandchildren, we outgrew the scooter. Six months ago, we purchased a used golf cart, worked on it, upgraded it. As I was riding on the street, an officer gave me a verbal warning that golf carts are not permitted on public street. I decided to sell the golf cart. Being so disappointed, I did a research on the subject, found what is called LSV law in the state of Florida. So I went to the Northport Police Department, spoke with an officer, and was informed that Northport does not allow golf cart on public street. I thought, the book does not say anything about LSV. I went to the city hall to see could, what could be done. Doing so, I came across Commissioner Jill Luke in the hall. 
I told her what I was looking for, gave her all information that I collected. She said, let's see what I can do. After researching all avenue, she says, North Port Port Regulation does not mention anything regarding LSV. We are here today trying to regulate the code of safety to operate an LSV within our public street. LSV can be very practical, whether heading to barbecue, running an errand, after dinner stroll, all can be done pollution free. I am looking forward to picking up my granddaughters from Lamarck Elementary School with my new LSV. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Nelson, can you tell the can you tell the rest of the commission and the public what you told me about going out with a bang? Do you mind? You have to go sure. to the register uh, to the podium, sir. Sorry. Do you mind sharing with everybody else what you said about going out with a bang with your LSV? Well, I had purchased an LSV which was not licensed. However, I was in the street and. Two times I got stopped that time with that LSV, and I didn't work out very well, so I decided to get away with it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Cucci. Good afternoon. My name is Richard Cucci. Um, I understand today is primarily concerning LSVs. Uh, LSVs basically were addressed under Standard 500, which is a federal statute uh, in the 90s. Um, Northport has looked the other way for LSVs. Uh, I've been in Northport since 2001. I have numerous thank you letters from the police department for utilizing LSVs in various events, as well as golf carts. Um, since the LSV had imploded somewhat, if you will, uh, categories, the golf carts, uh, to be specific, the difference between a golf cart and an LSV by today's standards is a five mile an hour speed variance, which is not mandatory, and seat belts. We have been doing it since the, uh, the inception of the law, taking a golf cart and doing a conversion. It's called an assembled from parts, they're inspected in Palmetto, Florida. Um, like I said, we've been licensed to do it uh, for Club Car, Polaris, and a few other brands since 2001. Um, the can of worms that this opens is uh, something that I have brought up with every city manager since Steve Kroll. You have the potential of about 55, 56,000 homes in West Villages. West Villages is a dedicated golf cart friendly community, not golf carts as has been discussed today uh, for golf course, PTVs, which is a golf cart that has been modified for personal transportation. They come from the manufacturers with head and tail lights, daytime running lights, brake lights, turn signals, horns, and they're capable of 20 miles an hour right out of the box now. Everybody keeps ignoring this sleeping giant in the room. Uh, technically, all of West Villages is illegal mm -hmm. under the current statute. You better bring a lot of officers to the Pirates game tomorrow because I have over 1,600 units, not that will be at the game, but in these communities that are not addressed in Northport statute. Um, and I brought a copy of the Northport statute that was uh, put into effect in 2011 that clearly states there will be no rentals in Northport. I was prohibited for 12 years. We donated all the golf carts for every parade this town ever did before we ever came here. I was told I can't donate golf carts anymore. I have to rent them. Then I was told I can't rent them. Then I was told I have too much insurance. Um, you know, it can't be covered in three minutes. I'll be glad to stay over if you have questions. I've only been doing this for 34 years. I'm pretty much a rookie. Uh, but I did work with numerous state and federal agencies to get the laws on the books. That's all I got. Thank you. Mr. Gucci, since yes. you, you seem to be the resident expert about um, LSVs and golf carts at this point, are golf carts um, 
licensed insured VIN numbers, do they have VIN numbers and get registered? They do not. A golf, a golf cart or a PTV has what they call, it's a, it's a VIN number, but it's called a serial number. The state recognizes a number when it becomes a 17-digit number. Correct. Okay? So what we do, if you, if you want to make your PTV or golf cart an LSV, we add the seat belts, we increase the speed, we send everything to Tallahassee in a packet with pictures and weight scales. They send it back to us, we make an appointment, we bring it up, they inspect it, and they issue a new VIN number and a title. At that point, it becomes equivalent to a Buick. You have to tag and title it, you have to insure it, and you also have to have a driver's license. Mm -hmm. The original intent of the PTV statute, or the golf cart statute, um, which the Bushes basically brought forth as a Sun Belt law, was to get the super seniors out of the big Cadillacs and Lincolns. When you see a set of hands like this going down 41, run, because that's your mom. They wanted to get them back in golf carts. Unfortunately, it opened Pandora's box on both ends of the spectrum. And now it is pretty much accepted that you learn how to drive in a golf cart and you wind up driving a golf cart. And the thinking behind that is, when you're 14 and you're learning how to drive, do you want to hit the garage door in mom's Cadillac? No, you want to hit the garage door in dad's golf cart. And when you're 97, do you want to hit the clubhouse at the community center in your old Lincoln or Cadillac or your golf cart? The common sense answer in both cases is, a thousand pound golf cart that only goes 20 miles an hour. So um, the, PTV st the PTV standards are pretty set in stone and they're industry wide uh, accepted, which is a big reason that the tax credit's going away, why GM, Ford, and Chrysler quit trying to compete with Ingersoll, Ran, and Textron. Uh, Ingersoll, Ran, and Textron together represent in excess of 90% of the market share in PTVs. And they're becoming more sophisticated by the day. And that's what you see running in any, bear with me, gated, guarded, resort, retirement, recreational, agricultural, or golf communities. That's pretty much been the rule of thumb on how most law enforcement looks at it. To answer your question about how certain municipalities have regulated speed, Boca Grande has been golf cart friendly since 1987. I was integral in that. Um, got flown back and forth by the DuPonts numerous times to get it pushed through Lee County. Um, there is, if you go to the old DuPont estate, roughly 16th, 17th Street, you'll see a speed limit sign that says 30 miles an hour. North of that has historically been 45. That's how they keep LSVs off of their island. I call it economic cleansing. Once you put a tag on a, on a golf cart and make it an LSV, it can no longer commute on the cart paths which now are being provided on the sides of 41 and North 40. Those multimodal paths are not designed for LSVs. They are designed for assistive devices, golf carts, bicycles, rollerbladers, pedestrians. Um, you know, the can of worms is already open. It's how North Fort as a municipality handles it. And unfortunately, West Villages has been ignored. Uh, it, came to, it came to the head with me with the Braves. When the Braves legal team said, we can't rent from you, we're in Northport. I went, don't worry about it, it'll be addressed. And meeting with city managers, I was told, we know we can't enforce that, but yet the law's been on the books since 2011, that you can't rent a golf cart in Northport. The Braves rent a substantial amount of golf carts from me, as do many other businesses and, and facilities uh, in, and, in and out of Northport. So it's not just LSVs, it's that whole category. Thank you very Can much I ask for you one question. Sure. Uh, the PTV, mm -hmm. uh, can you tell me what the difference is between that and just an ordinary golf cart? Historically, a golf cart, you see frustrated men and women hit a white ball and chase it. Exactly. No head and tail lights, does 12 to 14 miles an hour. A PTV comes from the manufacturer. It has not been altered in somebody's garage or at a dealership. Comes from the manufacturer with certified head and tail lights, blinkers, four ways, horn, windshield, mirror, and the proper equipment to be safe on uh, arterial roads. Seat belt? 
No. no. Okay. Uh, and the reason for that is NHTSA equates putting seat belts on one of these things to putting seat belts on a motorcycle. At 20 miles an hour, when you take on that Suburban, you don't want to be strapped in because you're going to lose. Uh, to quote Jeb, big truck hits little truck, little truck loses every time. Uh, and there's, you know, there's a lot to be said for that. That's why they are doing away with the windshield wiper. A golf cart windshield folds up and down. When it's up, you got your heater. When it's down, you got your air conditioner. The windshield wiper is a little manual windshield wiper like on an old tea bucket. They realized it was, it was ridiculous. Just like the state of New York, you used to have to have a heater. There's no doors. What good is a heater? So they are, they are gradually weeding out the obsolete stuff. Um, long and the short of it is a golf cart is a golf cart on a golf course. A PTV is something that's equipped to commute on the roads in small or gated or guarded communities. Do you know, does any federal or state statute or code speak to the PTV? Um, 312-2126 doesn't specifically say PTV, but it addresses the properly equipped vehicles um, that they can commute on any sidewalk that's five foot or greater, so long as they yield the right of way to pedestrian traffic, and that they can cross state highways that are marked or managed, which FDOT is telling me is the intersection at Publix and Grand Paradiso for Island Walk and the Parkway. So people can commute, if they choose to, to the ballpark or Publix if they have head and tail lights, windshield mirror, brake lights, and horn. So um, it's going to be an enforcement nightmare the way Northport's laws currently are on the books for golf carts. LSVs, that's state and federal. Um, I don't know that you're going to... Yes, you have the under uh, 316, 21, 22. You can enhance the you can enhance the enforcement and do away with them. You do have that right. But as far as golf carts in these communities, I'm not saying you don't have the right. I don't think you have the wherewithal or, or the the fortitude to go after all those homeowners. That that cow is out of the proverbial barn, if you will, already. There's too many. That's why the state doesn't want to take it on. <laughs> You were asking earlier about the speed limits, why a 25 mile an hour car is allowed to obstruct traffic in a 35 mile an hour zone. When I first became an LSV dealer, they did 45 miles an hour. Um, if, a little history lesson, Richard Nixon, with the gas shortage, dropped the speed limits to 55. But they never, got, they never dropped the minimum speed limit. So a few, a few states, Florida being one of them, started picking off snowbirds doing that north-south commute. Because if you were doing 54, you were obstructing traffic. If you were doing 56, you were speeding. Because the minimum and the maximum were the same. Mm -hmm. It took them a couple of years to get the minimum lowered to 40. Then when we all got used to paying more for gas, they raised it back up to 70, but they never raised the minimum. In the meantime, along comes LSV, Ford, Chrysler, GM. They were all mandated to create these cars. Well, I'm not saying it's intelligent, but by the letter of the law, if you wanted to jump on at Jacaranda and go to Sumner, you could because those cars were capable of doing 42 to 45. The minimum speed limit was 40. So the feds intervened. Well, they didn't have the money to change the signs originally. When they changed the signs, it was easier to regulate a small niche industry than it was to rewrite the legislation for everywhere. So they lowered the speed limit. Well, then the state said, wait a minute, if you're going to lower the speed limit for federal roads, that puts all the enforcement and the ed education costs on the state. So then they lowered it for the state roads, which unfortunately dumped it on you guys, the municipalities. And that's how it went from 45 to 35 to 25. And yes, you're right, everybody does 10 over. And that was brought up when they were putting the law to, to pen and pencil uh, for standard 500. And it's unfortunate because you might as well put a bullseye on the back of your LSV if you're going to drive on most roads, during, especially down here during season. Mm -hmm. So, Thank you, Mr. Cucci. Appreciate your, your help on this and expertise. While I have your ear, I have been requesting somebody address no rentals in Northport. We'll get it taken care of now that we know that this is on the book. So bear with us. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the is open. We might as well address really it quick. all. Um, Commissioner Hanks, yeah. 
So really what you're saying is the difference between the PTV and the LSV is that five miles an hour that keeps you from having to go through all those other and regulations. Seat and seatbelts. And, and seatbelts. That's, That's the only real difference. They, right. they found a niche to be able to just start mass producing them and just keep it just underneath them. Um, I just met with Lee right. County today, actually. I was on Boca before this. Um, we've built a lot of cars for a lot of law enforcement agencies. Um, I verified with Lee. We don't have one that's ever been registered. And, um, Chief, can you tell me if Northport's car has seat belts? What, the golf cart? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, don't know. Our golf cart that we purchased? The mm -hmm. police golf cart? No. I rest my case. Um, it's going to be awful hard to go out there <clears throat> and enforce a law when we have never built a police car. We've been doing it since the 80s that has seat belts, nor have we ever registered one. Is it a golf cart or a PTV? It's a golf cart. It's a golf cart. Well, but, it, but it's but not a PTV. But they used to do 40 miles an hour before we were told by the governor to pull them all back in. And I literally got threatened by then Sheriff uh, Monge, uh, McDougal down in Lee County, because we took their police cars and brought them in and slowed them down under an order from Tallahassee. And I was told they were originally approved to be community policing vehicles, not pursuit vehicles. They don't need to break the law under any circumstance. And it's still that way today. Thank so. you, Mr. Cucci. You Appreciate your input. Thank you. I'm sure you'll be getting phone calls from the commissioners as this uh, moves forward. So thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your help. All right. So I have no other public comment cards. Um, I do have a follow-up question. Are golf carts allowed on our city sidewalks? No. Will... Um, these LSVs be allowed on city sidewalks? Absolutely not. PTVs, I'd never heard of the phrase PTVs. It's so a this, modified upgrade from a golf right. cart that he just stated. So, the, so golf carts, PTVs, LSVs are not allowed on sidewalks? No, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, what about the multi-mobile? So the multi-mobile <laughs> that um, Mr. Cucci was talking about regarding that parallels 41, um, they, golf carts are allowed on that as long as the uh, width is eight feet or more and the city and DOT have written approval for that usage. So there has to be an agreement with the Department of Transportation and the statute says that they have uh, it, that um, pathway has that runs parallel to a state road has to be eight feet at wide. Uh, when cart. it says no motorized vehicle, that does not include the golf cart then? Right now, as it states, no, but if you get from, I'm, again, I would assume that city and DOT, if they were to allow that, that there would be signs saying golf cart access usage. But as it stands right now, there is no agreement between city and DOT for golf carts on there as it states in per, per state statute. So let's, let's be clear. The multimodal, are they allowed to have golf carts on them now? Multi the, the multimodal pathway. Not not as right now, no. Because there's not an agreement. There's right. And there's a state statute on that that says that the DOT is saying that is allowed. However, it's basically saying the government entity and them need to communicate to look and make sure and if there's signs that need to be added or whatever, but they're open to allowing, according to state statute, the use of golf carts on those pathways. Okay. Yes. So what about Price Boulevard? Price Boulevard is going to be a multimodal kind of pathway, will they be allowed to have golf carts on those? That is for you, okay, depending on, um, th that comes up to the okay. governing body because that is not a state highway, it's a state roadway. So That's two different, was... two different, yes, two different entities. Okay, so if no golf carts, okay. Sorry. So the multimodals, it depends on who has jurisdictional um, responsibilities for the road that it's it's next to. Right. So 41 would require signage and an agreement with FDOT to allow golf carts on the multimodals. Because Price Boulevard is a city street, it would require commission approval to allow golf carts. Absolutely. And actually in state statute, um, now it's, it's reminiscing back in my head, the golf carts on those multipath uh, parallel to state roads can also not exceed 15 miles per hour on the golf cart, first as the statute, state statute's written, and with that approval <coughs> that's written. Okay. 
Um, Here. We just also want to refer to state statute to them. Under state statute 316.212, um, paragraph B, subsection 1, the local government entity determines after considering the conditions and current um, use of sidewalks, the charter mace, uh, the, the character of the surrounding community, and the locations of authorized golf carts crossings that golf carts, bicycles, or pedestrians may safely share the sidewalk. So you basically, I would say, determining of the size of the sidewalks that you all could determine and authorize sidewalk uh, golf carts to be on certain sidewalks in, in the city. Multi-use multi -use pass. And what, what uh, state statute was that? I'm sorry. No problem. Then. It's um, 316.126, six, or I'm sorry, um, it's going to be 8B1. What's the rest of the beginning numbers, please? 316.212. 316.212, 8B1? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. What a can of worms. Holy moly. All righty. I never thought I'd learn so much about golf carts and <laughs> LSVs in one hour as I have done right now. So, Commissioner Luke, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Luke, I will get it straight one of no, these days. No I am so it. sorry. Uh, yeah, I had no idea when this came forward that it was going to open up into golf carts, but um, why not, you know, why, why not discuss it? Uh, I was talking with a gentleman who wanted to enhance his experience with his children. Um, he has a medical condition, and his words to me were, I wanted to go out in the bank driving around in my low-speed vehicle with my grandkids. And so I thought addressing low-speed vehicles, because right now they're allowed per state statute, that if we wanted to put some regulations on this, restricting them to a 30-mile-an-hour community road rather than out on a 35 when they're only supposed to be able to go 25 would be advantageous, not allowing them on uh, arterial road. Uh, having the driver be 21 instead of 16. I thought we could put these things in place, still allowing them uh, to exist. Uh, if you're in a community and you want to get over to the school to pick your child up, you just go through those community roads, those local roads, and you don't go out to where the, the traffic is heavier. I didn't see a problem with that. Uh, I, actually like it. it it's this is the way he put it this is florida it's golf carts and palm trees <laughs> and so moving here a lot of people do like that transportation i like the multimodal. i have seen just in this last week some golf carts out on the 41 multimodal. one was at uh, coco plum the other one was just down from coochie's place um, going very slow, but you know, it was a couple in one and a single lady in another just probably headed to the store to pick something up. Um, so I would personally myself like to see uh, some stipulations put into the, the LSV so that we can utilize them, but it's going to be safer for the community. But then I think we need to have uh, staff and some further conversations on what we like to see with golf carts or those PTVs. And telling a business that they can't rent, huh, that's like really business friendly, isn't it? Sounds like something that was on the books way, way, way back yeah, and just, just never really. Yeah, that's that's not what you do and stay stay friendly for business for your community, especially one who gives so much to a community. So what kind of discussion the others have, I don't know, but that is where I stand. I'd like to see some uh, furthering, putting some restrictions to this low-speed vehicle, but then opening up uh, and allowing staff and us to have a further conversation on golf carts. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Any any other comments or 
Commissioner Hanks, I see. Yeah, just to uh, comment with what the vice mayor is saying, I I, uh, I don't like all the over regulations anyway. So <clears throat> I I personally would just be fine with the state statutes for the LSV. People have to take responsibility for themselves. Um, as far as the multimodal, the multi-use paths, uh, when they're sized properly, I think a golf cart should be able to be utilized. We should not be um, dictating for a single uh, planned community what they can and can't do as far as golf carts go. Um, I say, I mean, I mean, as uh, Mr. Coochie said, it's a can of worms we're not going to be able to control anyways, and why would you want to? So um, I would be, uh, uh, and definitely, you ought, you ought to be able to rent a golf cart. It makes no sense that you can ride a golf cart around in your community as long as you own it, but if you rented it for the week, you can't get on it. And I don't even know how you'd regulate that anyways. So that would be where I would stand on all that. Stop and everybody asking, did you rent this or did you buy this? <laughs> Anything else, Commissioner Hanks? No, that's it. Thank you. Commissioner Emmerich? Um, yeah, I, I, I'm in agreement with that as well. And I, But I do agree with the chief about if we're on main roadways and stuff like that to where the possible hazards going along on the main roadways, I would be more in favor of neighborhood communities, you know, uh, within your neighborhoods, the multimodal passageways. And... Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to see people cruising down, let's say, Sumner Boulevard in the certain areas or Price, Biscayne, you, may, you know, your main roadways, I don't believe that's for golf carts. Neighborhoods, going up to the corner store, going down to the school, in, in the low-speed areas. That, that's how I feel about it. I don't, I don't think it needs to be major transportation out there for people, but uh, an accessory type of transportation for them to go run an errand. Can I ask one question off of what he just said? Sure. Um, you wouldn't be able to off of Sumter anyways because the speed limit's 45, right? I mean, it has to be there's, 35. There's some sections, um, Commissioner, that are 35 mm -hmm. on right. Sumter Boulevard. So so as long as, so, so you could go up to that speed limit sign, you just couldn't go past that right. speed limit sign is what is being said. And the, the governing body of the commission can authorize in neighborhood residential areas that golf carts could cross over Sumter from one neighborhood to the next. Right. All right. Well, but I would not travel the, on right. the roadway. Right. We wouldn't have the right to be able to do that. Correct. I personally wouldn't have a problem with allowing these golf carts to cross because you'd have to have the proper signing anyways, right? To let folks know this is a golf cart if it was crossing. on a roadway, yes. You'd and really they'd have, have to cross at that specific crossing. They can't just cross wherever they want, correct? Th yeah, they would have to cross at a, as a, in an intersection. At a designated. Well, at an intersection. Hold on, one at a time, please. Right, at an intersection, but that intersection has to be designated with signs, right? No, the, the roadway that the golf carts, if you would, according to state statute, it says that the roadways you allow access to for golf cart usage in the city on public roads, you would have to properly post designated signs. It doesn't say about you have to have proper posted signs to cross at intersections, just to travel on. That's how I interpret the... But as the long statute. as there's a multi-use path and we agree that a multi-use path can be used and that's going along Sumter Boulevard, they can utilize that and they can cross Sumter Boulevard at whatever yeah. crossing they need to, correct? Yes. And, and yes, and in certain ways to this, uh, certain people in certain neighborhoods could very well be able to navigate through certain neighborhoods to certain local businesses without a violating state statute or violating city ordinance or, or state And I do think this is more important as we look more into these neighborhood um, commercial developments. This is exactly, right. you know, this is part, yeah. you know, the, you know, the bicycles, the walking, it's getting cars off of the roads. I think it would very, be a lot more beneficial. So I, I haven't spoke on this. Um, I think I was still there though. For a moment, oh, they oh, jumped on a question. I apologize. While I, was I, th I apologize. I thought you were. No, done no, too. that's fine. I just Go got ahead. one other statement because Mission. we already have that in in place right now over at the Publix. There is golf cart parking right there for residents of Heron Creek that can come and go and and they can utilize something like that. Again, it's gonna it's gonna save a lot of different things: people's money, you know, gas, pollution, everything. All sorts of things can come into factors when this is in place but it needs to be in place properly. I don't want them out there mixing with traffic because again, we're gonna have accidents and they're gonna be fatal. So I, I, want, I want this done properly. That's, now I'm done, thank you. So 
I am very concerned about the safety of either golf carts, LSVs, or P P PTVs being on our major roadways. And I think maybe we can solve that by saying they are not allowed on arterial or collector roads because those are already defined in our code. Um, but they can be crossed. And then I kind of sit there and go, can they really safely be crossed unless they're using like crosswalk areas? I, I don't want these, these personal vehicles sure. just crossing a road that doesn't have a crosswalk there sure. because they're, they're going to be mincemeat by the time they get there to the other side. Um, so I am concerned about that. So if we, I don't know if we can do anything that says they can cross this, cross these arterial and collector roads at designated crosswalks. Maybe that intersections or intersections, intersections right? Yes. Because too often you have, and I'm trying to remember the street. I think it's Kingsbury, where it you can cross over Sumter from. Mm -hmm. Kings, Kings Lee, you can cross over, but it's not a crosswalk. Even though there's an intersection, it's not a crosswalk. Right. So I intersection. think we have to, there are many intersections that are not designated as crosswalks. So I, I'm, I'm more inclined to using the words crosswalk, um, where Cross, they're designated. Crosswalks will be more restricted, Mayor, than intersections. If you are to open up to allow um, LS, or I'm sorry, golf carts in, um, neighborhoods versus designated crosswalks. So intersections, um, there's a lot more intersections versus the crosswalks. So it's something that the governing body, again, is going to have to make a decision on. Do you want to say intersections or crosswalks? If you say crosswalks, that's going to restrict mobility from crossing over roadways. All right. Um, safety is paramount. And, and I think that just really reigns true after what we saw happen on Friday. Somebody riding a bicycle on a sidewalk, which is legal, and got hit by a car. Um, I, I would hate to have all these LSVs and golf carts and PTVs on our roads. And, and I'm, I'm just very concerned about safety. So keeping them off of the collector roads, keeping them off of arterial roads, is the only way I would even consider something like this. Crossing like 41 for West Villages, you said there is no signage required for LSVs to cross over 41. Again, LS, according to state statute, LS, state statute looks at LSVs once they meet all statutory requirements are registered as a, any motor vehicle. Okay. So they follow the rules of the law of a motor vehicle on the roadway. But a golf cart or PTV would require signage to be would able to cross? Would require to cross the state road. Again, it kind of goes back, you just need to get DOT where they're, where they're crossing at on their state highway. Uh, and that's, that would be through an agreement or, under, or a letter back and forth between one government entity to the other on that roadway. Yep. All right. The other thing, Mayor, if I may, uh, in reading the statutes about the signage, we have to sign any of the sidewalks, whether they're the state or the local, that we allow the golf carts to traverse on. But I think what you're getting at is where would, where the crossing would occur, would we be required to put the signage in? Yes. We would not be required to put the signage in, but I would strongly recommend we install the signage anyway. Right. Because for crossing. Right. Because in the statutes, it talks about the local governing uh, municipality <coughs> ha will have to create an ordinance, and all these types of things would be covered in the ordinance. So although the minimum requirement may not require it at the crossing, I would recommend we have the crossing in there. Could require it at these could. designated yes, areas. Could. That was where could. I was going yes, with could. it. Yes, where yes, there's sir. A yes, sir. That would be an additional to what the minimum is in the statute. In other words, to make it more safe. Similar to on the multi-use pass, and we're, we're planning one right now on price. We talked about this when you have, and, and, you, and I'm sure you've seen this, for example, having the bike riders that we, we call, you know, kind of like the professional bike, bike riders, those that are just not going out taking a leisurely bike ride, but they go for, for speed. And, you know, they're really into the exercise aspect of it, kind of quartering that off. Similar to if you're going to allow golf carts on those multi-use paths, may want to think about that for safety. 
because you don't want mom with her child in the, in, the, in the baby carriage and shoop, here comes by the golf cart. So either she has to get off, move around or something. We just have to make sure it's done safely. Yeah, we, we have to make sure the pedestrians are safe. We have to make sure yes, the bikers are safe. We, yes, ma'am. And, and what a can of worms. And, and if, <laughs> if I may add um, on that, if we, you, if we do limit the amount of areas for them to cross, you all will see this all, they will make their own determination mm -hmm. of where to cross. And what we don't want is them crossing in medians, in right. the grass, and making their own. So the more areas of you allow and put those signs where they can cross, the better for, for safety reasons. So we don't want them to cross over in the grass median, going through trees to where there's obstruction or anything like that, because they're going to do it. If they're restricted, they're going to they're gonna push the limit. Kind of like the cross. no U-turn signs on Sumter? What's that? Kind of like the no U-turn <laughs> signs on Sumter? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, they're really, they're really um, effective. And furthermore, <laughs> Vice Mayor, I just wanted to follow up with your question um, in prior, prior to um, uh, this meeting, um, you asked about child safety restraints. Right. Yes. Um, so I did research, and I want to thank Traffic you know, Officer Officer Carter for doing some research. And he found a 2004 AG opinion from Charlie Crist, uh, who weighed in on this from another agency, asking the very same question about LSVs and golf carts about child safety restraints. And his position is the state statute talks about LSVs has to meet the standards of a motor vehicle, which means there has to be child restraints. The golf cart, the state statute does not talk about it because as Mr. Cucci said, golf carts under state statute were designed on golf course communities, not for kids to be buckled in, so on and so forth. So it's silent. So technically golf carts don't have to have child safety restraints. LSVs, they have to follow state statute when it comes to child safety restraints as a motor vehicle does booster seats, et cetera. And see, I, I I would be more inclined to keep the golf carts in those golf cart communities, not outside those communities, not on our roads, and the LSVs being the ones that are allowed on anything other than the arterial and collector roads, because they are two totally different things due to speed and due to the equipment that they carry. And those golf carts need to stay in golf cart communities on the golf courses and, and stuff. These LSVs, if you're going to be on the road, they have to have the proper equipment and be the vehicles that they are. Um, well, multimodals or multi-use paths, though, they could be allowed. for the golf cart. That's right, for the golf cart, that's which would be on the side of one of these roads, correct? As long as they're not in the road. Right. Yeah. Mayor, just to confirm what Commissioner's saying is that the state, uh, state F FDOT is saying that golf carts can use that <coughs> roadway along 41. Yeah, the so long as it's not 15 miles per hour. LSVs, state statute, they cannot. Correct. They, they, right. yeah. the they have to be on, on the, road. the road. Yes, ma'am. So that's what Boy, he's what trying to say. what an enforcement mess you guys are going to have. Yeah, I think we've all agreed that it's, it's, it's going to be a, that's why we have a great city attorney, Mayor. She's awesome. <laughs> She's awesome. Seriously, you see, you see a golf cart on the road, you stop it, and you find out it's an LSV. You see an LSV that's on a multimodal path, <coughs> you stop it, and you tell them get off because you're not a golf cart, even though it looks like a golf cart. There is going to be challenges on, you know, absolutely. actually measuring the speed. You know, right? Wow. <laughs> Would you agree on trying to get a, a speed on, on a, you know, <coughs> determining... Whether it's a LSV and LSVs, you can determine by looking at certain features of it. You're going to see a registered tag on it. You're probably that's going to tell you it's a registered motor vehicle, a registered vehicle LSV, and you probably would stop it and and say, hey, listen, you're, you can't be on this roadway. Um, and I'm, I'm pleased to know that our officers are very good about education. We've stopped multiple people riding golf golf carts. It's happening today in this community. We we see them day in day out, and we're trying to educate them, let them know, hey, you can't be operating a golf cart in the residential streets. Um, so, I uh, just like this gentleman here was stopped when I walked. They gave him a warning. Mm -hmm. We're trying, to, we're trying to teach them, you know, you know, the, our city ordinance and what it say. We're not, we're not trying to impact them monetarily right. on on these. We're, we're trying to change behavior. And a lot of our streets don't have sidewalks next to them. And if you're going to ride your golf cart in the street, it's got to be an LSV. It's got to be a legal vehicle. Yeah. 
So before we go ahead and get any motions on the floor or continue the conversation, I do want to recognize uh, former Commissioner Blucher and former Commissioner Tower who has joined us. I apologize for not doing it sooner. We were really in the meat and potatoes of the conversation. So welcome to our meeting. Um, does anybody else have anything that they would like to discuss or question or? Well, well I'm just trying to get a feel of this direction here. So um, there is an access road on the side of Sumter, right? You know, there's a certain mm -hmm. section. Of it's there. a multimodal there's an access. on Sumter? Yeah, but there's an access road, right? There is. Uh, there's you know, on a certain side. portion. Yeah, on yeah, a certain also, portion, yeah. and then there's a little neighborhood portion. right there. Right. So, so are we saying that a, that a PTV... Are, Go ahead. She's going to she's follow well, up. Well, yes, I was about to ask the, the question. So are we saying that if, that if uh, someone at uh, housing address 4017 wants to go down to 6156, which is on the 300 yards road. on that little access road, which is a, a street, that a PTV cannot make that track? A PTV could, but a golf cart can't because it's not Well, a, a PTV and a golf cart are exactly the same. No. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. Yes. A PTV and a golf cart. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yes, they are. That's what I'm at. Uh, the only difference between a PTV right. and a vice or mayor, LSD. I think with the PTVs, what uh, Mr. Cucci was saying is it's a golf cart. It's just modified with headlamps, yeah. turn signals. Um, I, does the seatbelts come on? I'm not sure, but that's there's not. That's, that. L, that's LSD. Oh, so they're PTV. Just, yeah. So, sorry, uh, sorry. again, sorry. statute just talks about definition of a golf. Down, golf cart is for a golf sense. course. It only has headlights, that's it, and nothing else. And back where you put your golf clubs. Now these PTVs have seats in the front, seats in the back, headlights, tail lights, turn signals, everything. And so that's what I'm asking. So, so what happened was, the, the, this is why I asked the question between the PTV and the LSV, is that they found a little niche where they could fill that gap between an LSV and a golf cart and meet certain road qualifications without having to meet the standards. So that's my, my question. If you have a PTV that has virtually everything an LSV does, it just goes five mile an hour or less and it doesn't have seat belts, are you saying that they can't go seven houses down on a side road or in a neighborhood, like let's say my neighborhood or even your neighborhood, that they can't run to the other end of the street to visit their friends or just to run down the end of the street? That's what I'm at. I'm, I'm trying to see what the direction is here because I'm because I'm getting a little confused with all the back and but forth. How does the police officer that has to enforce this determine the PTV and the LSV because the PTV is not registered? So I'm going to, that's yep. exactly, I'm going a to PTV see that it's registered. PTV is not registered, Correct. so they have no license plate in the back. So right, which is they how they not be allowed on the road. Right, but this, is, but this is for us to determine. That's right. what I'm saying. What is the direction the board is going? Because he's going to look and he's going to see the tag. He's going to look at the seat belts or he's certain going features that he's going to say, well, that's an, L, you know, that's an LSV. That is definitely good. He's also going to see a golf cart that has tail lights, headlights, and all those things, but no tags. And he'll say, well, that's a, that's a PTV. And my board determined that on these side neighborhood streets, they're okay. And he's not going to do anything about that. I, but if it's a regular golf cart that doesn't have those things, maybe that's something he would say, there's no tail light, there's no, there's no turn signals. This is a regular golf cart designed for a golf course. Therefore, we're going to stop that one and say, I'm sorry, it has to be at least a PTV or an LSV. That's, the, that's, that's what I'm getting here. So I'm trying to find the direction of the board because, if we're, uh, because I'm getting a little confused by what we're talking about between LSV, PTVs, and golf carts. And so I'm trying to see, are we saying that not a single PTV, which I would allow PTVs not on the main roads. I wouldn't allow the LSV on, on a 45 mile an hour Sumter uh, Boulevard probably, but I would allow a PTV, which is only five miles an hour less than an LSV to go down a 30 mile an hour uh, neighborhood street like your street or my street where I'm just going uh, 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 up the road to a neighbor's house. That's okay. kind of what I'm asking. Can I ask a yes. question based on mm -hmm. that? So you're on a residential street, a PTV has a stop sign, does not stop at that stop sign, T-bones a car who does who has the right of way on that road. It's a little neighborhood road. Mm -hmm. This guy's supposed to stop at that stop sign, mm -hmm. blows through it and T-bones that car. Who's responsible for the payments? LSV. 
Yeah. It's a PTV. P or PTV. Or the P oh, yeah. Yeah, the PTV. It's a PTV. PTV. They're not licensed. They're not right. insured. They're not registered. Who pays for the damages to the car that that PTV just caused? Who gets cited? That would be a civil suit. Yeah, it would be a civil suit. But, but, but that, but that PTV should be stopping at stop signs as a bicycle should also. Bicycle so they would be giving right. a ticket. You still have to abide by You still have to law. abide by the law. So how do you enforce something like that? So I call the officer and I say, this, this little PTV just slammed into me, T-boned me. He didn't stop. What do you do? So insurance and it's, gonna, it's a vehicle <coughs> crash. So they're going to do a crash report. Person will more likely be cited. And that Who would be cited? The PTV the for PTV for violation of right of way, and the insurance company of the other motor vehicle is going to civilly go after the PTV op operator. After they utilize their uninsured motorist Correct. section of so their mayor, insurance, so you, you, may hit, you may get hit by a car <laughs> with someone right. You could get hit with someone who has no insurance. It's almost mm -hmm. the same. Gotcha. Thing. You could have a bicyclist run right to yeah. the side of your car. Yeah. That's the same thing. I, mean, we I just do, wanted to... But laws clarify. are still enforced right. on any motor vehicle, period, or any vehicle. Right. Based on we, we would even support PTVs operating within residential neighborhoods. You would or would, we would. not? We would. You would, yes? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So that was the direction I was asking where we were going. As long as they're comfortable with it and, and they... Because... I have to take your lead on this kind of stuff because you're the ones that are going to be enforcing it. And, and I'm concerned about safety, but I'm more concerned about the safety of these vehicles being on the arterial and collector roads. We, and I think we we've already... We you on the main arteries. And, that, and that's our primary concern. Correct. For those main roads. With the way our roads are right now, we just don't feel they can be done safely. So... The driver's license, somebody who's 16 years old can operate a motor vehicle, and a LSV is considered a motor vehicle. Yes, ma'am. So they can operate it at 16. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What about a PTV? Is there any age restriction? 14 or older. So PTV is 14? Under golf carts. So golf PTV carts 14, but what's a PTV? PTV is a golf cart. It's the same. Okay. It's just modified, again, when I think Mr. Kuchin talks about the PTV, state statute does not mention PTV. PTV is a modified version of a golf cart that adds taillights, you know, turn signals, et cetera. So I know that's kind of confusing, but we're, for the purpose of PTV, a PTV is a golf cart with modifications. And, and I, they're not licensed to travel and, and drive a PTV on, on a road but an LSV is, they have to be 16. You can, you can you enhance. enhance. You can enhance. You, you just can't you can be more lean. your ordinance, which right. I would suggest. So we can make a PTV. You have to be 16 or yes. older. We can do that. As an ordinance. Okay. 21. And again, I would, 21. I would, Mayor, I would actually uh, refer to the attorney to review to make sure that that is, if there's no other restriction that says you cannot, but I would refer to um, Ms. Layton on that to look into if that's what the direction of the, of the commission wants yeah, to do. I, I, but I personally, too, would caution the board um, as, you know, we, we as a legislative body cannot regulate everyone's safety all the time. There is personal responsibility. I will tell you, at the age of 13, I was able to buy a motorcycle. It, it was, um, I think, 250 cc's and take that thing anywhere in the state I wanted to back when I was young. Now, has anything really... That's why the rules have changed. <laughs> probably so. <laughs> but that being said, what I'm saying is we can keep regulating this, trying to take responsibility off of families and people, and I just think that is the wrong direction to always go. I would say if you're going to be, if you're going to allow on arterial roads, things like that, where you have heavy traffic, no, you need to be licensed. You need to have a licensed vehicle. I caution against... If, if my 14-year-old son, who turns 14 here in a month, and he's going to love this, if we decide to get a PTV and he just wants to run to his friend right around the corner and we have literally one car every two hours that drives down our street, he has the ability to do that. I think that is fair and reasonable as the father of my child. So I just want to caution being over-regulated. Can I add something? Commissioner Luke, uh, I'm sorry, Vice Mayor Luke, can... Do you want to speak or do you want to hear what they need to 
Oh, they can respond to okay. what he was saying. Go ahead. <clears throat> My thing is if, if you don't set some regulations, whether mm -hmm. you have a 12 year old who doesn't understand the rules of the road right. and, and stuff like Correct. that, I think 16. that loads, you know, his eight year old brother and sister or whatever onto this PTV mm -hmm. and, and they go down the road and they don't know to stop at the stop sign and they go through it. So, Correct. but there is, there is a law that you have to be 14, right? There already is, right? You have yeah. to be 14. The state statute for, for the golf carts is at 14 for right. operation. Right. Right. So right. But that's and, a PTV. I, I just want to verify the, uh, and that's why Officer Carter came over, that attorney uh, general, uh, attorney general opinion uh, from 2004, and Ms. Slayton's going to review, it, I think it states in there and she's going to interpret it, you may not be able to alter for page 14, like increase it. Right, that's so what I'm thinking. Gonna, she's going to look into that and review. So I think they hear all, and I think that's why I kind of want to refer to our attorney to, in, to decipher that AG opinion. But again, I want to caution the board from even trying to do that. You mentioned 12. That's well, great. But the law is 14. Right. There is a huge gap between my son at 12 and my son at 14. Huge. And he was a pretty mature 12-year-old. You know, um, so I just want to caution the board at continually over-regulating and trying to tell folks how to raise their families. I just want to caution that. Vice Mayor. Uh, as far as the age goes, I would prefer... Um, it be driving age because they do learn the, the rules of driving in the road uh, at that point in time because they are going to have to obey those signs and everything else. It's not as though it's an ATV that you're driving around the farm or, uh, you know, to the neighbor's house or something. This is actually something that's out on the road and you have to abide by the road, the laws of the road. So I would think the education coming into play through driver's ed would be beneficial. On the PTVs in the neighborhoods? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, if, if that is what they are talking right. about, seeing them as one and the same. I, I would hope the law would state that you could because they already give jurisdictional rights to the cities to state which roads they go on. So I would hope that they would look at other uh, regulations to that also. But going back to what you guys were saying, if it were the local road that's 30 miles an hour or less, because some of them are only 25, uh, you would consider the PTV as well as the LSV. If that is the case, then definitely the LSV should probably just be left alone and leave it as state statute, and we just address the ordinance for the right. PTV slash golf cart. And I'm with everybody else, golf cart needs to stay on the golf course. But if it has the enhancements of the PTV, and you're willing to allow them on those, you know, low speed uh, roads, local roads, then I think that's where we need to be going. Vice Mayor, I just want to let you know too, is on low speed vehicles, the same statute refers to mini trucks. Um, Correct, we talked about so, that. So yeah, so I just want to make sure that on certain roadways. So by remaining silent, that would also include those mini trucks as the definitions are in there and the pictures to show you what those look like um, would also be in operation. I, I, I understand, but if, if you leave the mini truck in the SLV with the state statute, mm -hmm we were talking about putting that LSV in the mini trucks in those local roads only, not on arterial, not okay. on connectors. So if you're going to allow the PTV in those areas, why are you going to make somebody get everything else, you know, the seat belt, the license and everything else, if you're going to permit the PTV? No, no problem. So. I just wanted to make sure that that statute that you all read also includes the mini truck. That's all. Yes. But the mini truck goes up 55 miles an hour, too. Yes, ma'am. Can I ask a question? Are you saying to allow the LSVs on the arterial and collector roads? There's state statute that they can't go on a road over 35. Over 35. Right. So, so you're, you're saying it's okay to have it go on to Sumter as long as it's not in the 40 or 45 mile an hour sections of Sumter? I don't see the sense of forcing the LSV to the same restrictions as the PTV. 
I don't I don't see why you would make them one and the same. Why are you gonna call one 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 another? But so to me, if somebody has that LSV, it's got all of the licensing, insurance, everything it's else. A Thirty or a, uh, a under fifty cc scooter. Those things barely do thirty miles an hour. Right, they're, and they're out everywhere. on the road. Yeah, they're all over the place. They're, they're allowed on the highways. I come so, from an area where there's. Uh, horse and buggy still being used I by the Amish with a slow moving vehicle oh, sign on the back of it. Mayor, uh, speaking with Director Valia, majority of all arterial roads and connector roads are 40 miles an hour. Chamberlain, Salford, um, and I believe, is it Biscayne is also 40? Or is that 30? Yeah, it might be 30. 30. It might be 30. So there, there is a vast majority. Again, that's something that we would have to go back and research to let you guys know what roadways are 30 and for a decision for you all to make on that if that's decided upon. But there are a vast majority of the connectors that are 40 or greater. And, and to that point, uh, if, I mean, I drive down Biscayne because I live off of it, it's 35 miles an hour. And if somebody has a license insured LSV, I think they have the right to drive down Biscayne and then head off into their little community. I might have somebody across Biscayne that's my friend and I want to get over there and see him. So I go down the 25 mile an hour road, cross over the 35, and then get onto a 30 mile an hour road. I don't have a problem with that because it is license insured. So I think they can go down Biscayne. But no, that PTV shouldn't. It's not licensed. That's a connector road. That that one shouldn't be out shouldn't on be the able road. To cross the connector. Road. It can go across it. Right. All right. Good. You go across good. it. You can cross it. You can't it. drive down it. Exactly. You can't operate it on on that road because it is a connector road if it's not licensed. But then, and I'm I'm just playing devil's advocate yeah. here. So if I have a PTV and I see you with your LSV, which looks to me pretty identical. I'm going to start doing the same thing. And, and well, you get yourself sure a ticket. Mayor, you'll be pulled over because you don't have a tag on the back. Yeah. I'm going to stop you. I'm not going to stop by the law. Exactly. Because you don't have a registered tag. That's okay. how I know it's LSV. And, so and, if you're and I, I hear you yeah. because our conversations are mostly dealing with law-abiding citizens. And we all know we all law are law-abiding law citizens. And there's consequences for that. Um, I just concerned about safety and, and making sure that everybody is is fully on board with it and knowing what they're allowed to do and not allowed to do. And I, and, I don't know how you and, have that educational mayor, campus. I think the assumption of law, I mean, it is my responsibility to know the law. Correct. Right? So so I think, you know, I just, those responsibilities mayor, are... If I may add, too, this is something that if you do authorize the governing body is that we can evaluate and monitor... LSVs and P it, what's going on and report back and it becomes in a concern, it's something that the commission <clears throat> body can evaluate. Well, um, we have been talking for years about having um, this connectability and, right. and, and all of these other options other than driving these gas cars and everything. And this is another option. I mean, how can we say no to this type of option or um, vehicle option that doesn't utilize the gas and cause you know all these things it's, it's a green type of vehicle it, it's not taking up the space as the as the cars I mean so if we're wanting to go in that direction we need to open One it up question. so it can go in that direction but with safety Commissioner Amrich and then we'll get a, a motion after one more round and we'll we'll wrap this up Oh, I forgot I even hit the button, but uh, no, I was no commissioner or vice mayor Luke. I had everything written down here. It just came out of her mouth exactly. instead of mine. So I okay. just wanted that that design and what was going to go where, how, when. That's all I, I was going to put out there. But she already did it. Okay. I agreed before. Yeah. Commissioner, uh, your other statement. Commissioner Hanks. Yeah. Uh, so, so a bicycle is considered a vehicle. Right, it's by, on the roadway, yes, sir. Yeah, it sits on the roadway. It's considered a vehicle. My 10-year-old can ride his bicycle down the road, correct? Yes, sir. On the road, not on the sidewalk. He can ride it on, uh, on the road legally. He can cross the road. He could ride up 
uh, Hill, uh, Haberland, where I live, the area, everybody knows, public record. <laughs> so, you know, uh, so, uh, so they can ride right up that road. This is, this is what I'm saying, you know, I don't, I, I just want to be cautious and I would suggest it is safer for a 14-year-old to be in a vehicle that is wider, taller, is built all the way uh, uh, around, is more visible than, you know, why are we not regulating 10-year-olds riding bicycles down the road or 12-year-olds or 13-year-olds or 14-year-olds? This is what I'm saying. I think a vehicle like that is far, and I would guess you would agree with me, is far safer to ride from neighborhood to neighborhood or around the street than it is their bicycle because of the visibility with the tail lights, the headlights, blankers, the blankers, yeah. and all that. So this is why I just want to be careful with the 16-year-old thing because I'm telling you, I can see a lot of reasons why a 14-year-old could just run up the road, take his fishing pole, or I have I have a yard that goes to my back street, and if I'm doing a little construction there in the front and I need him to do some work in the back, he could hop in that thing, ride around the block, which is one mile to go around the block, and come into the, uh, the back of my property. To, to question on that, um, I mean, I was, I've was i been riding motorcycle for so long, I was grandfathered in, but they make you take a special course to ride a motorcycle nowadays. Uh, is it possible that a course could be given on, you know, to a 14 and 15-year-old for education of road? Is that a required course? Yeah, just require them to take a course that teaches them about turn signal, stop sign, yields, who goes first when you're at an intersection, and well, stuff would, like that. Well, just a question on that, though. When at 16, down here you can get a permit at 15, and you would already be licensed at 16. So are you trying to break it down to 14 now? I, I would just keep it at That's the state, state statute, statute because... I would, too. You know, then then they would already have that education, because in the of what I'm hearing in the SLV or LSV, you have to be licensed anyways, correct? So that's already taken care of. Then you're riding on the roadways. You know, the other one is the PTVs. You're riding on the neighborhoods, and you're riding on the multimodals. So I I think that's already taken care of itself. Okay. From what I've been hearing. All right. Let's get a let's get a couple motions on the on the floor for staff, and if we need to, kind of do it one, do another one instead of lumping it all together. That way, then it's very clear and very concise. Um, all right. I'll make a motion that staff work with the police department in conjunction with the city attorney's department in drafting an ordinance to come back as far as. Um, the, the definition and ability or the usage of golf carts being only uh, used on golf courses, PTVs being utilized within local roads, but barring them from artillery and connector roads, crossing at certain intersections or crosswalks, and I guess we don't need to state anything about LSV. We would just continue to follow state statute with LSV. Second. Thank you. So I got a motion on the floor um, by Vice Mayor. Um, City Clerk, is it clear? Yes. Thank you very much. It was clear. I got like 98% of it written down um, by Vice Mayor, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Vice Mayor? I think this gets us the ability to draft an ordinance, bring back for first reading, uh, and then we can look it over, see if, if anything else does need to be addressed. Uh, so I think we're fine with, you have a question, sir? Do you, do you all want to add for that, for the PTVs on the pathways parallel to? We're going to do that separate, I think. Okay, that's still separate. Yeah, let's, okay. let's, let's okay. keep this one clean, and yeah. then we'll go on and, and get other ones that we need to do, because I have a couple also. So. Um, this one is only uh, um, for defining golf carts only to be used in golf cart, golf course communities and PTVs to be on local roads, crossing at designated locations, um, not allowed on arterial and collectors. 
So that's the motion on the floor. Um, did you want to speak to that, Commissioner Emmerich, since you were the seconder? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. Fantastic. Any, any discussion? Thank you. We'll go ahead and call the vote on this one. I got another question. Okay, let's hold the vote. Commissioner Hanks, what's your question? So, uh, this does this affect gated communities that are completely gated in their HOAs? This does not affect them. If they want to drive public, their golf court up the road, those are and, private public. Uh, those okay. are private roads. Mm -hmm. uh, this is public roads, Commissioner. We're only talking uh, about just, public roads. Yep. That's what I thought. <laughs> I just wanted to clarify before I hit a button. And that passed four to zero. Okay. Because um. I heard you say something about uh, agreements. So, well, certain gated communities do have agreements with us, Commissioner. And when they do sign that, it opens up that they will follow and abide by our. Um, all of our ordinances. But they're making that choice to do so. Absolutely. All right. Does um. somebody want to address the multimobile and side? Streets. I'll pass the gavel. To artilleries. Um, I'll make a motion to have staff bring back ordinances, ordinance code, I'm not sure exactly what, for addressing rentals of golf carts, PTVs, LSVs um, in city limits to be allowed. Second. Um, all right, there is a motion on the floor to bring back an ordinance or change the ordinance that we have in order to allow for rentals, the renting of golf carts, PTVs, LSVs within the city of Northport. Uh, that was stated by Mayor McDowell, seconded by Commissioner Hanks. Mayor McDowell, would you like to speak to that? I never knew it was on the books or else this would have been done a long time ago. I have no idea why we're even having to do this. Exactly. <laughs> so. We'll call the vote. Oh. <laughs> I thought I pressed that a long time ago. I'm so sorry. That passes four to zero. Mr. Cucci, you can rent vehicles. <laughs> Close to it. Um, all right, so I have the gavel back. Anybody want to make a motion regarding the um, multimodal paths, what's allowed, what's not? Oh, uh, Assistant City Manager, before we go on to that, we'll hear from you. I just wanted to make sure some of the things you are passing re require some, may require some extensive signage. I just wanted to make sure that yes, you're aware that's of all the financial impact. That would be part of the safety aspect of it. Yeah. Um, so we have to address the multimodal. Anybody want to? Push for motion. I, I don't see it. So go ahead. Hmm? I'm sorry. You see that part? Okay. So it. would it, yeah. Commissioner Hanks, are you going to make a motion about? Go ahead, please. I'd like to make a motion to allow golf carts and PTV PTVs to use multimodal and uh, multi-use paths next to. Um, roadways. Yeah, well, I mean, well, there's a there's there's a statute on widths, right? So it has to fall within that, correct? Um, eight feet yes, wider. eight feet wide, right. and not to exceed fifteen miles per hour. Right, but that's for the but, along but, uh, that statute. So there's, so it would fall within the statute. Yeah. Second. Motion on the floor to allow golf carts and PTVs on multimodal paths. Following state statutes made by Commissioner Hanks, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Anything to that, Commissioner Hanks? I just think it's that we need to be able to do it. Anything to that, Commissioner Emmerich? No, ma'am. All right. I, have, I would like to bring something up. Um, the situation that Commissioner Hanks brought up about Sumter 
uh, it has that little side street. Mm -hmm. So do we want to also add the access roads along the arterial and connectors no, to be part that of it? Fits the, the uh, PTVs, though. Yeah, right. PTVs are already allowed to be on there. But you stayed a golf cart. Well, I did it for the multimodal and multi-use. Okay. So, right. so that way they're on a path. We'll, we'll scratch it. Road. So you'll say even on that, it has to be the PTV then. What? Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, All right. on the multi mode. Okay. So Good. that way they have access. Just, just wanted to make sure that was clarified before we went on. All right. So the only concern I have with this, and, and I understand the intent, but if golf carts are only going to be allowed in golf course communities, now you're going to say, hey, you're not in a golf course community, but you can take your golf cart, which you can't drive anywhere else but in a golf course or gated community. On the sidewalks. Well, that sounds like a silly government at work, there, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, we just, we just. <laughs> that's what I'm trying to get at. Each other. You're uh, right. Contradicts yeah. the exactly. previous. Yeah. So, uh, no, I think we need to, need to remove golf, golf carts, yeah. Yeah. golf carts yeah. off of multimodal pathways and just allow. Yeah. Even yeah. though I would rather see golf carts be able to do that. Just keep. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's just a PTV then. So, so I'll, yeah. Uh, whoever had the second, is it okay if he removes the yeah. golf cart part of the multimodal? Yes. Yeah. And then I remove the golf cart part. Just Madam Mayor? Yes. It, the remaining the remainder of the motion is can, to can allow... Can you hang on one second? Guys, guys. <laughs> Thank you. There, there are two things that I'd like to point out. Number one is I'd like to reemphasize that this has not gone through legal review. I know we've heard a lot about what the law is from our police department and from our public commenters, but this has not gone through our department for legal review. Um, so I can't, I can't confirm um, the legality of any of the aspects of, of what you all are discussing. But my understanding from what's been presented here today, if this motion as modified remains that to allow PTVs to use the multimodal and multi-use paths, but not the golf carts, a reminder that state statutes does not define or utilize the term PTV. That's something that was utilized by the public so commenter, be. who I believe is a vendor, but state law again addresses golf carts and addresses low-speed vehicles. So we could say golf carts that have tail lights, headlights, and blinkers, or, tail or define it yeah, ourselves yeah, define for our city. Is. You could, but if the motion is to allow them to allow PTVs following state statutes, they're not addressed by state well, I guess statutes. I so I, I would suggest that maybe you clarify your intent, so we. We're not confused when we're trying to write the ordinance. Right, should we yeah. just do that motion all over? Yeah, but yeah, I'll pull my second. Okay, so we're. Yeah, yeah. I'm, pull yeah, your motion. Yeah, pull my motion. All right. So, so we need to define what a PTV is, or let me ask this 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 question: If a golf cart has no access outside of a specific designated zone, and we just use the term golf cart for multimodal and multi-use pathways. They'd have to be able to get to it anyway. So that would still only leave it open for PTVs, correct? Because they're not allowed outside, even if they have that. Well, we just made a motion to restrict the golf cart to only Well, golf yeah, that's courses. what I'm saying. So, so if there's no definition, rather than us making the definition, we could still use the, the term, and, and I'm asking the city term, we could still use the term golf cart, and those that are determined um, within the community Oh, we still have to define what a PTV is too, don't we? Because we're saying that they're allowed. So no matter what we do, we have to define it. And we can help you define that. I just want to make sure because I'm going to be charged with reviewing the legality of the ordinance that is drafted pursuant to your intent, that your intent is clear in your motion right. so that there's no confusion. We don't want to bring you back something that that's not what you wanted to see. Okay, so I make a motion to bring back a definition for PTV a vehicle and to allow PTV vehicles to utilize multimodal and multi-use pathways. But that's state defined. But okay. that's that's where she hold on, hold on. We got a motion on the floor. We got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Hanks for staff to come back with a definition for PTVs and PTVs to be able to be used on multimodal pathways. Do I hear a second? And multi and multimodal and multi-use, yes. Multi-use. I'll second. City Attorney, do you have a problem with that? Doesn't state statute 
address the width and all those things? Commissioner, we have at least six statutes at play that that we were not asked to review before this meeting right, was I'm harmonized. Just, but if so it I does, do, it is we, my understanding that there are some some with aspects addressed in state statutes based on where the the path is related to a state highway or not that apply to golf carts, I believe. And you'll bring that language back. I guess this is what I'm asking. If the state already addresses it, you'll take a look at that. And if we didn't directly address it, it'll go to state statute. If the state statute addresses it, there is no need to restate it in your city right, code. Right, that's what I was... Right. But you can. Right. Um, but, but we're trying to keep our code smaller and smaller. It was my advice for best drafting practices not to restate what the law already is at the state level. Okay, so that's how I'd like to do it, and then you'll look at all the legal. Uh, I'm just going to throw out an amendment, if I can, please, and on those multimobile and multi-use, uh, be of eight feet or greater. May I? Yes. The state statute only refers to the eight foot minimum width adjacent to a state highway. Correct. Looking at Price Boulevard, when we were planning that roadway trying to work within the 100 feet, 12 to 14 minimum would have been much better for the multi-path. We, we had to settle at the 10 feet on either side of the roadway because we worked within the roadway we're working with. I would strongly recommend the 10 feet, not the eight feet. So I have an amendment on the floor for eight feet. Do I hear a second? Hearing none, the amendment fails. All right, so we'll go up. At, I want to speak to the motion. Go ahead. And the reason that I'm stating that is because some of the multi-use paths could be narrower than eight foot. Uh, Multi-mobile is going to be wider, but the multi-use, which was included in it, some of them are only six feet. And that's why I was suggesting that it be eight feet, either multimobile or the multi-use was my reasoning for it. Thank you. All right, so the amendment failed for lack of a second. We're back to the main motion, which is to have staff draft a definition for PTVs and for PTVs to be able to be used on multimodal and multi-use paths. Um, that was made by Commissioner Hanks, seconded by Commissioner Emmerich. Commissioner Hanks, I think you spoke to it. Commissioner Emmerich, did you want to speak to it? I'm good. Okay. Um, my only question is, is if they are on these multimodal paths for this PTV, however it's going to be defined, how is it when they're crossing over the main roads, whether it be a DOT road or a local road? How, how is that going to work? Because at some point they may want to cross 41 to go to Walmart, or they may want to cross Price Boulevard to go to City Hall. How is crossing those roads going to be impacted? Because it seems like state statute addresses golf carts crossing roads. I just want to make sure that we're not forgetting about crossing roads on these PTVs. I, I kind of, I'm sorry, Mayor, but I look at a PTV as a golf cart. It's again when you say PTV, I refer to a golf cart. It's just modified with tail lights and a back seat for other people to sit on. So it's, it's a golf it's a golf cart. Um, so they would have to get permission from DOT to allow at certain intersections to cross on 41 on state roadway, and the governing body would have to designate certain areas to cross a PTV on a, on a roadway that's greater than 35 miles an hour. Certain areas. Does the West Villages use the PTVs to cross over 41 now with their PTVs? Say that one more time. The West Villages areas, when they're crossing over 41, uh, do PTVs cross over 41 now without that authorization? I have seen, and I'm, may I refer to one of my traffic units that works at intersection mm -hmm. to answer that question? Because I cannot, Mayor, um, but Officer Carter can answer that. Just state your name for the record, sir. Officer William Carter. There, sorry. No, stand right there where the mic is so we can hear you better. There have been uh, multiple golf carts and LSVs crossing at West Villages in, in 41 uh, during the baseball times. Not all, not all of them were going to the baseball game. They were going to use the shopping center there. Mm -hmm. But they did cra cross at the traffic light using the sidewalk and the crosswalk. Thank you. 
and this is probably going to, at some point, in my opinion, we are going to have to have a conversation about creating a bridge over 41 to connect those communities. It's going to have to have a conversation because it is a very largely used intersection. Um, I've called it two years ago. So we are going to have to have that conversation. And hopefully that'll be part of our principles of agreement discussion too. We, uh, Madam Mayor, could staff push for a golf um, pedestrian slash golf bridge. Uh, it, we weren't able to get traction, uh, but that's maybe something you have a conversation with the developer when that comes back to you, hopefully on March 25th. Sounds good. Thank you. All right, seeing nothing else, um, we got the motion on the floor as stated multiple times. Uh, we'll go ahead and take the vote. And that passed four to zero. All right. Do we want to address the 16 year old, 14 year old thing? Or is that pretty well been resolved once we have this discussion about what PTVs are with the 14 year old? I feel it's been resolved. Okay, just want to make sure because that's the only thing I still see outstanding on my, my notes here. All right, uh, since this is a commission meeting and we do have a time certain at 4 p.m., um, do we want to do any commission communications and, and conversations about um, staff communications at this point? Yeah, I think we should before. I just want to say thank you, thank you. Chief, Deputy Chief Morales. Thank you very much for all that you've done. And Nelson, thank you. Sounds like you got even more than you came in after. So thank you, thank everybody, you. for your input on this important subject. Um, Mr. Carter, thank you for thank all you. you've done also looking into this. Appreciate it. All right, so let's move into commission communication so we can get that part um, cleared up. Um, Commissioner Emmerich, anything? Nope. Vice Mayor. I only have one. The welcome sign that I talked about a couple of days ago is lit. So thank you. <laughs> nice. I'll have to drive by at night and see it. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, ma'am. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Hanks, anything? No. Um, looking forward to going to D.C. for National League of Cities. That's coming up this week. Um, I'm hoping to learn a lot and bring back some great information. Um, anything interim city, interim proposed city clerk? Anything for you? No. Nothing. Uh, city, city attorney, city clerk, no report, no report, uh, assistant city manager. Nothing, ma'am. Okay, sounds great. So at time, it's now 2.58. Um, we are in recess until 4 p.m. for time certain. Do you want to divide?
it's four o'clock. I call this uh, commission meeting back into session. But before we move downstairs to uh, do proclamations and recognition, I'd like to take a moment of personal privilege. I'd like to recognize my son, Travis, who's in the audience. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Turn so, the camera on him. Speech. That's right. Speech. That's all right. <laughs> he just froze. <laughs> Um, at this time, thank you folks for letting me do that. Um, let's go downstairs and we'll do our proclamations and recognitions. How about we get the finance people down front here, please? This is an exceptional group of individuals. I'm so proud of them. Kim, why don't you come stand by me? And you guys don't. Come on, get close right here. Get you in the camera. Come on, come on. <laughs> Whereas the Florida Government, Government Finance Officers Association is a professional association found in 1937 and serves more than 3,300 professionals from state, county, and city governments, school districts colleges and universities, special districts, and private firms. And whereas the FGFOA is dedicated to bring your professional resource by providing opportunities through education, networking, leadership, and information. And whereas this inaugural Government Finance Professional Week, sponsored by FGFOA and all its member governmental organizations, is a week-long series of activities aimed at recognizing government finance professionals and the vital services that they provide to our state and our community. And whereas during this week, government finance professionals throughout the state of Florida will be acknowledged for their hard work, dedication, and leadership. Now therefore, we the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 16th through March 20th, 2020 as Government Finance Professionals Week in the city of Northport and extend our appreciation to all government finance professionals throughout the state and here in the city of Northport for their hard work, dedication, and leadership. that does it here. I mean, they're the ones that make it happen, keep things going, keep us out of trouble, um, protect the, the city's assets, um, safeguard them. So thank you so much for what you do. And all our budget coordinators and everyone out in the departments, I wish they were all here today to come up here because they're all a part of it too. So thank you so much. Thank you.
Um, she's copied it to our, our employees. All right, we got any employees in the building? <laughs> Come on, Come on down. back down. Come on, employees. Yeah, you guys are employees sitting down up there too, so come on down, please. I do see uh, quite a few employees sitting. I, I do too. They're still uh, sitting on. down. Come on. Directors are employees too. Assistant city manager, uh, city attorney, city. Okay, you're lucky. Um, come on. Oops, sorry. I was. I thought you were moving too. Oh, move down. Move down. Move down. Need as many employees as we can. Uh, come on. Come on, Hey, Chief. Good morning. Come on down. This is the only time you get to direct staff. <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome group of employees. Whereas... National Employee Appreciation Day is observed annually on the first Friday in March. It is a day for companies to thank their employees for their hard work and efforts throughout the year. This day was created for the purpose of strengthening the bond between employer and employee. And whereas the first Employee Appreciation Day was recognized in 1995, and whereas this year, March 6, 2020, is recognized as an Employee Appreciation Day across the United States. And whereas employees make up the foundation of all organizations and are its most valuable asset. And whereas employees' hard work and dedication to serving the citizens of the city of Norport deserves recognition and appreciation every day. And whereas employees at the city of Northport strive every day to provide services that will enhance the lives of all who reside here. And whereas employees continue to help the city develop and meet its goals to make Northport achieve anything. And whereas Human Resources hosted an employee recognition luncheon on Friday, February 28th, 2020 to recognize Employee Excellence in Performance and Service Milestones at the City. Now therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 6, 2020 as Employee Appreciation Day. Thank you all. I think the proclamation said it best that our employees are our greatest asset and you know the luncheon is the the one time a year we get to see everybody and show that appreciation and i hope you all really enjoyed it thank you to our hr team for putting it together and making it a, a great day so thank you thank you All right. We have anybody here for Del Devel Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month? Here we are. Patrick from the Loveland Center. Oh, Patrick. How are you? Good. Fantastic. Whereas, Patrick, March has been recognized as National Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month since 1987 when President Ronald Reagan called upon Americans to provide our fellow citizens with such disabilities both encouragement and the opportunities they need to lead productive lives and to achieve their full potential. 
And whereas the Loveland Center was established in 1962 and is a nonprofit 501c3 organization that supports individuals with intellectual and de developmental disabilities, and for over 57 years, through educational, vocational, and supported living programs, Loveland encourages self-advocacy and strives to develop greater independence for those they serve. Whereas the Loveland Center exists to ensure that every individual we serve is afforded the same rights to the opportunities we all share and seek to educate the community on inclusion of, and advocacy by embracing every person to be a part of their community and considered equals. And whereas Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month recognizes Florida's public policy accomplishments concerning persons with disabilities as well as identifying public policy improvements needed to ensure that citizens with developmental disabilities have the capacity to lead full, productive, and engaged lives. Now, therefore, we, City Commission of the City of North Port, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 2020 as Developmental Disabilities Awareness Month. very much. Uh, from Loveland Center's behalf, we thank the North Port Commission for the support that we've received. Uh, while we've been in existence since 1962, we've been in the city of North Port now for two years, um, and we've seen actually quite a, a great amount of growth as North Port has grown, so are we, and we look forward to being here in the city supporting your citizens for many, many years to come. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, engineers, National Engineers Week. You know, for engineers, you sure are having a hard time finding your way down here. Well, they're making a plan. Okay, okay, that's, it. that's what they do, and that's what they do. Got, they gotta analyze it. Can I? How's the yeah. slope on this before yeah. I walk? Traffic. Traffic. Lane, it? <laughs> God, these people. Okay. I love it. I love it. Whereas, through innovative, creative, high quality solutions to technical problems, engineers help design, construct, and maintain the infrastructure and facilities that contribute to a high quality of life for all residents of Florida, and whereas National Engineers Week is dedicated to ensure a diverse and well-educated future engineering workforce by increasing understanding of the of an interest in engineering and technological uh, or technology careers, and whereas members of the Florida Engineering Society, Florida Water Environment Association, American Society of Civil Engineers, American Water Works Association, American Public Works Association, the Florida Institute of Consulting Engineers are making strides to interact with the engineering education sector to prepare future engineers to maintain our economic leadership and quality of life. And it is fitting that we recognize and honor the continuing contributions of America's engineers by observing Engineers Week. And whereas the quality and effectiveness of these engineers, or of these facilities, as well as their planning, design, and construction is vitally dependent upon the efforts and skills of public works officials. So now, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, do hereby, hereby declare and proclaim February 16th through February 22nd, we're a little late, but we're going to do it anyways, uh, 2020, as National Engineers Week. We engineers don't talk very well, but I'm going to thank you for the recognition, and engineers, for, for the kids here. We, we like to design things and we build things and we make the quality of life better. We design roads, strange systems, water control structures. And um, Ben here is a, the roadway design engineer, civil engineer, Francis, and I'm the stormwater engineer. So thank you for the recognition. Can you practice on Minecraft? Is that a, can you practice? Because my, yeah. my kids can design anything on Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> All right, SWAT, it's your turn. Come on up. Wow. 
know I wiped it. There was anywhere I shook hands. <laughs> All righty, this is a proclamation for Take Down Tobacco National Day of Action. Whereas tobacco use remains the number one cause of preventable disease and death in the U.S., killing more than 480,000 people per year, 16 million people in the U.S. currently suffer from smoking-related illnesses, whereas 5.6 million children between the ages of 3 to 11 are exposed to secondhand smoke daily and 39.7% of children under the age of 18 today will ultimately die from smoking, while 170 billion, B, billion is spent each year on tobacco-related medical bills. Whereas through youth smoking rates have declined to an all-time low, e-cigarettes have created an epidemic with new generation becoming addicted to nicotine. Youth vaping rates have skyrocketed, resulting in 34.1 of Sarasota County's high school students reporting use of e-cigarettes within the last 30 days, per the 2018 youth, Florida Youth Substance Abuse Survey. And whereas the focus of Take Down Tobacco National Day of Action is to rally communities across the globe to push for the first tobacco-free generation through a day of national acti activism, the state of Florida is committed to goals and objectives of this National Day of Action by offering support to various public health activities, programs, and events. And whereas our local SWAT, that's them, Students Working Against Tobacco chapter, presented their cause to the city commission and aided the city in attempting to find a solution to the epidemic within our local community by supporting the Tobacco 21 movement, which was passed at the federal level in December of 2019. Now, for, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, do hereby proclaim March 18th, 2020, as Take Down Tobacco National Day of Action. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of SWAT, I would like to say thank you for this award and that we are working very hard to end vaping. Wow. Would anybody else like to say something? Any of the adults? Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you from the Department of Health and also from SWAT, Students Working Against Tobacco, for Northport support in all of the actions. Um, obviously, Tobacco 21 was not a end-all and save-all. There's still work to be done, but we do appreciate the support that the city has offered us. Nice job. Nice You guys going to stick around? This next proclamation is way overdue, I think. But every time we tried to give uh, Iman a proclamation, she had to travel somewhere. <laughs> so we finally gotten a time where she can come and we can actually present her with a proclamation. Come on up, Iman. If the family wants to come up with her, come on ahead. <laughs> For as Iman Bisha has demonstrated an extraordinary talent as a young performer, artist, and opera singer. And whereas after winning her first contest in January of 2016, at a national anthem competition for the Fort Myers Miracle. She has gone on to be the top winner for season five of Arabs Got Talent. And just this past year, she was a finalist for season 14 of America's Got Talent. Whereas Iman has made many national appearances, including performances for the NBA Golden State Warriors in San Francisco, Feed the Children Charity in Oklahoma City, 
for His Majesty King Abdullah of Jordan at the National Cathedral, and the Nobel Laureate for Children's Summit, both of those being in Washington, D.C. She has accompanied renowned pianist Lang Lang in the final or finale of America's Got Talent. She performed with Jewel, an American singer-songwriter depicting young Jewel in the Cirque du Soleil show One Night, One Drop in Las Vegas. And she has been asked to join Andre Raoul U.S. tour as a guest soprano. And whereas she has performed internationally. You're how old? Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> she has performed internationally for the president of Panama, Juan Carlos Varla, and Henry Kissinger, and also for the Heart for Children charity event in Berlin, Germany. She has also performed many times locally here lately, singing the national anthem at the Brave Stadium at our big rally and lots of other things. Whereas the city of Northport recognizes the outstanding personal and professional achievements of a man and encourages all youth to pursue their dreams, to be active, and make a difference in their community. And whereas Northport, Florida is proud to be recognized as the home to a man and her family and is a vibrant city where you can achieve anything. Now, therefore, we, the City Commission of the City of Northport, Florida, do hereby proclaim March 5th, 2020, as a special day of recognition for Iman Bisha. And call upon all citizens <coughs> to celebrate her achievements and support and nurture the hopes and dreams of all the youth within our community. Thank you, Iman. Award. I'm honored, and um, it's just been really great to be able to grow up in such an amazing community, and with everybody's support, and I just can't say thank you enough, and um, yeah, and thank you. This is amazing. <laughs> Where are you headed to next? Where are we headed to next? Let's see. My head is like jumbled right now. Right. <laughs> Mom, you might have to help us out. Where are you headed to next? Um, well, I think we're, tomorrow we have an event. And then we start on the tour, which I'm super excited about, and it's going to be so much fun. I don't know. It's just all these great opportunities popping up, and just, again, you guys' support, and Northport, and you everything know. you guys have just been over the top. It's been amazing. You're over the top. Is uh, Miss Judy Shield here? Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I'm going to read her certificate of appreciation in recognition for her personal commitment and dedication to the city of Northport while serving on the tax, the Citizens Tax Oversight Committee from February 27th, 2018 through February 27th, 2020. Thank you, Ms. Judy, and we'll go ahead and get this in the mail for you. And the next one is for Mr. Norbert Schneider. Is he here? Don't see him either. Okay, in recognition of his personal commitment and dedication to the city of Northport while serving on the Public Utility Advisory Board from March 5th, 2019 through February 3rd, 2020. Thank you, Mr. Sherbert Schneider. All right, Mayor Commissioner Carousel. So Commissioner Carasone had the privilege to be able to attend EMO 4. That is a, a very lengthy class that she took and she completed in November of 2019, right here in Kissimmee. And this is her certificate of completion. Uh, EMO 4 was actually more about uh, looking at yourself. And uh, I would suggest everyone here to take it because it was really insightful. Uh, I'm very good at criticizing myself, but it was even better to have someone criticizing you on a more positive nature, you know? Criticizing your fault. Well, I mean, you know, you know your personality and you know your faults, but, it, but to have, have all those things play together and try to, you shush. I bit my tongue. Yeah, <laughs> to figure out, you know, why you think that way, and then how to connect with your other fellow commissioners because of the way you think, and then you can kind of put your other commissioners in different pockets and say, okay, now I understand why they think that way and why they think that way. It was really a very, very good course, and I, I would say that um, out of all of them, you know, the others are kind of more about procedure and government and the function of it and you know being the old one on the block I you know it's kind of boring this one was really cool really really cool and I would suggest everybody to attend it excellent well I'm glad you found it very rewarding I did thank you <laughs> all right so now we have a um, plaque which is um, very big that is very big and it is very it's heavy. Heavier than it is to accomplish this for you and your vice mayor, maybe pull the plaque or something like that. I can hold it for you. It's really heavy. Yeah, how about the public? Oh, we got somebody to do it. Yay! Yeah, we did. Oh my gosh, and you just lift it like a piece. I'm afraid I'm going to drop it. All right. So I'll hold the mic. Can you please tell me what this plaque is all about and what it represents? How's that? <coughs> Who are you first? I'm Chad. I'm with the utilities. I'm plant ma operations manager. Um, is this is the award. No, okay. <laughs> this is a, an award. It's a landmark award for the water treatment plant. It's for an older water treatment plant, and this shows the dedication of the city and their ability to maintain and operate a water treatment plant for a lengthy amount of time. Sure. And with our uh, dedication and everything we're doing at the water treatment plant, I think that we'll be able to keep it going for another generation or so. Excellent, excellent. So, so this is only given out because the plant is so old and it's been maintained all this time and it's yes. still working. Yes, yes By it 1963. Excellent. Why I wasn't around. Hold it together yep. for four years. Yeah. There you go, hold it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, not only for coming and getting this award, but holding it because this thing weighs like is, will that be attached to, to that? Yes, it will okay. be at the water treatment plant. Because that's like play. metal, heavy yeah. metal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be hung on the outside of the plant, but we might have okay. to find some more in the Okay, good. Yeah. Thanks, so. Well, do we, thank you do very much. Do we have much. any more questions while he's holding it? Yeah, right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my workout for the evening. There you go. Apparently. Yeah. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. made Rick do that. Thank you. Thank you very much. We shake your hand, but your hands are yeah. kind of full.
since we already did commission communications and uh, administrative communications, it's 4.30, but since Commissioner Carason is here, did you have anything you wanted to add for commission communications? Seeing a head nod, it's 4.30. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good job. Good job. You showed up just